As someone who not only owned the next 100 v when it first came out, but shot professionally and started a YouTube channel with one, I have a solid understanding of its strengths and shortcomings. That being said, my expectations for the X-106 were sky high, and Fujifilm sent me one to use for a little while. To provide context before we start, I'm a full-time photojournalist, part-time photography educator, and I do some video for the organization that I work for. In my free time, I do street photography and make YouTube videos for this channel. Now, it's my understanding that this is a pre-production unit as well. So with that all being said, welcome to my office. Arguably the most important aspect of a camera is its quality of output, and the X106 provides more of what we love. The 23mm f2 is carried over from the V model, but the new 40 megapixel sensor has entered the chat. I'm glad that higher resolution sensors are becoming the new standard, because A, that means it's no longer a $3,000 feature that only full frame cameras get, but also B, it allows for more freedom with cropping. As someone who likes to shoot in the square format, I am totally here for that. But on the flip side, while I'm always happy to have better features, an extra 16 or so megapixels is not going to change your life if you don't print or crop often. Also what's new is the Riala Ace film simulation. This joins a Stia, classic, and nostalgic negative as my favorite color profiles. And I think it's a great all-purpose option. The autofocus is solid at best, confusing at its worst. The single point autofocus actually isn't my problem. Though it's not my preferred mode, it's pretty good. Acquisition is fast and it's essentially mistake proof because you're holding the camera's hand. My beef comes in with the zone autofocus, which is my preferred method across every Fuji camera I've ever used. At best, this was accurate maybe half the time. Overcast light, hard light, up close, walking pace, basic street photography settings, it was not consistent. Compounded with the fact that the storage speed is UHS-1, and this camera just did not feel efficient sometimes. If you're a hybrid shooter, switching from recording 6K video to taking some photos within 10 or 20 seconds of it, this camera may be liable to still be writing to your card. So you'll encounter times like I did where you'll miss shots. For those of you who are out there that will only be using JPEG or recording 4K here and there, this probably won't be much of an issue because those are smaller files. But if a camera has 40 megapixel RAWs, I'm gonna use them. 6K video, I'm gonna use it. UHS-1 speed on a camera of this price is just confusing. I think it should have had the faster storage speeds. I mean, if, if the XS20 has it and that's $300 less, that doesn't really make sense to me. In the midst of this frustration, I would find myself admiring the build. All the buttons feel like they're in the right place and there's accessories and thumb grips and whatnot out there to make it feel even better for you. The main feature that I was excited to test out though was the IBIS in video mode. Ever so slight crop aside, the 6K video is excellent. While I didn't shoot any log footage for this video, you can shoot in F-Log to get additional flexibility and dynamic range with your cover grading overall. Possibly the biggest thing that Fuji has going for its video is that if you just expose correctly, you can bake in arguably the best colors in the camera space and just there you go. Being able to use the built-in ND in both photo and video mode, is just, it just takes the cake. My first day out with this, the sun was beaming. And I thought I wouldn't be able to get any footage because I didn't bring an actual separate ND filter. Remembered the feature, enabled it, and problem was solved. IBIS was very well done. It barely added any size or weight to the camera, and it opens up a new dimension of creativity for people out there. But surprisingly, amongst all the new stuff, the 6K video, 40 megapixels, IBIS, the battery is not new. I had this camera out with me for entire day excursions. And while I would definitely drop down to the last bar or two after being out for three or four hours, I didn't need to switch out to my spare. Overall, on paper, this camera is solid. Now I'm approaching this from a V user standpoint, and as someone who's been able to use dang near all of Fuji's cameras after the X-T2. This is not me telling you what to do, simply my own thoughts. After spending some quality time with this, I will not be buying the X-106. For everything that it does well, here's why. This is the first time since buying an X-H1 in 2020, goodness gracious, where I felt a Fuji camera had unreliable autofocus. Like I said, single point is good, but zone wasn't reliable. And it breaks my heart to say that, but I'm not gonna sit here and act like I had a good time with the autofocus overall when I didn't. Next, this should have gotten the new battery. If it would have added a few millimeters of size and 70 grams, do you actually care? And let's not forget, every other Fuji camera in this price bracket has a new battery. 
XS20 has it, XT4 had it, XT5 had it. If this is a hybrid camera like the specs suggest, I think that's in order. Lastly is something that I mentioned earlier. The UHS-1 slot speed is not the vibe. Only having that with a 40 megapixel sensor in 6K video capability is doable, but not ideal. Now, if you're someone who is just looking for an everyday carry to take on vacation, hang out with friends, just photograph your life with the best straight out of camera JPEGs in the business, I totally get why you probably pre-ordered this. I, I'm not against that at all. For a compact street photography camera, I mean, beautiful sensor, incredible form factor, it's the most pre-ordered camera of all time for a reason. But if one thing is for certain, I'm glad that this camera is so popular. I'm glad that it is selling so well, even though it's not for me, because it shows that compact cameras are important. People want top quality features in their compact cameras. That keeps the camera industry alive. It keeps it thriving, it keeps the innovation going. And I think that makes winners out of us, the consumers at the end of the day. But let me know if you bought or are going to buy an X106 and let me know in the comments what you think of this camera. My name is Dorian Coleman and I'll see you in the next one.